Lisa here. Welcome to Walking the Self-Worth Path, a series where I share with you my favorite tarot and witchy tools, techniques, and rituals to support your journey to an empowered life. So now that we have tackled body acceptance to some degree, we've taken some baby steps in that area and we've tackled self-care and we have hopefully a solid self-care practice or we're working on that. The next step on the self-worth path, the next major area we're going to move into is self-awareness. And self-awareness is kind of a nebulous area in a way, because this is the place where we begin to really start to look at ourselves and figure out what it is, what it is that makes us tick, why we respond the way we do to things. We start to make connections and we start to look at our own behavior. We start to look at how we deal with things like change and the connections from our past to our present. And we start to, yeah, like connect the dots. I don't know how else to express it. In my own journey along the self-worth path, when I hit this stage, I began to recognize that a lot of my core reactions, a lot of my core work was around the relationship between fear and trust. And along the way, I developed a herbal blend that would help me or support me in this work. So this has become a foundational part of my own magical practice. And I thought I would share a version of this with you guys. Now you've probably seen me talk about this blend before on my channel. I've mentioned it, I think in some show and tells, but this is my very personalized blend. And we're gonna create the same base for a blend, an herbal blend about dealing with trust. And I think because a lot of times when we're facing big changes, when we're facing upheaval, a lot of times it's hard to either trust ourselves, trust another person in our life, trust a process, trust the universe, whatever it might be. And for me, when I can lean into trust, I find that I am more able to cope with different things that bubble up in my life. And that's been a huge part of my own self-worth path and my own practice of self-awareness. So today I'm gonna flip the camera around. We're gonna make up an herbal blend for trust. I'm gonna share my favorite herbs for this type of a blend. As always, please keep in mind that while I'm going to share this recipe with you, I also want you to know that these are the kinds of things that you should definitely personalize, you should tweak, you should add or subtract things to make it feel like yours. So while this is a great like sort of jumping off point, Definitely please experiment, uh, research the herbs, figure out what you, what you want to put in there. Now, how I use something like this for me is I use these kinds of herbal blends to make bath salts. So I'll mix this particular blend into bath salts. I will also use something like this to make sachets, to carry in a pocket as a reminder to... You can use these herbal blends in so many ways. You can use them as a loose incense. You can add it, like sprinkle the herbs around a working space to bring in that energy or across an altar. You can use this in an offering dish. There are so many ways to work with an herbal blend. These are just a few, but let's flip around. I will show you how we can put this together and I'll share with you the reason I incorporate different herbs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'll see you in a second. All right, so creating your own herbal blend for a magical intention is really actually a very straightforward and simple process. It basically consists of three main steps, gathering your ingredients mindfully, putting them together, and focusing your intention throughout the process and at completion of your blend. So I'm gonna break down ingredients. I have here for combining them, my trusty mortar and pestle. Um, this is one I've had for a long, long time. I use it exclusively for my magical work. This doesn't get into my kitchen or anything like that. This is just for magical work. So we're gonna build this together as I talk about each ingredient and I'll show you how I go through the process. But I'm only gonna make a very, very small amount because I actually have a pretty full jar here still. I just wanna top it up essentially. Plus my blend has a couple of extra ingredients that I picked for specific things around my own personal work that I'm not going to dive into in this video. So I don't want to like put a whole lot more in here, but let's dive into the ingredients I have. This is again meant to be a bit of a jumping off point. It's important to know that when you're making an herbal blend, the most important component is your connection of that herb with a specific property your focus on that property as you work with that herb and your overall intention for what it is you're trying to create and what you're trying to help the what you want the herb bl herbal blend to help you do and i think if you hold those intentions really close as you create your herbal blend you'll find that you have something really potent that's going to be incredibly effective for you so when i first wanted to make this blend i actually decided to make it because i had heard about some 
properties of marjoram that really fascinated me. Specifically, marjoram had some metaphysical associations with trust. And as I did my research into that connection between this herb and trust, it made a lot of sense to me. And it really felt like an herb that I wanted to use as a foundation to create a herbal blend around trust. I'd never worked with marjoram in my magical practice before, but it's a really easy to find kitchen herb. So it's a really great one to use as a foundation for an herbal blend that is essentially about trust. So this is sort of the core or the foundation of this blend is marjoram. So what I will typically do when I'm adding the herb in is I will simply focus on that primary property, the reason I'm bringing this herb in is for trust. So I will focus on trust as I pour this herb into my bowl. Now I'm only making a small amount, but because this is my foundation, I'm going to put a lot of this herb in, in proportion to the other ingredients. So that is my marjoram for trust. Now what I'll also do, and you'll see me doing this in, in videos as well, is once I've added an herb, I'll pause for a moment, put my hands over the bowl, sometimes just one hand or sometimes both hands or cup them over, and I'll focus on that property and what I want that herb to do for a few moments. Imagine that I'm sending that energy into that herb, like I'm boosting it or charging it. And I'll usually do this until my hands feel really hot, which is how I feel or know that it's working. Keep in mind that with you, you might feel energy differently. Energy might feel cool or tingly or buzzy. You might have a different sensation. You may not have a physical sensation at all. You might feel it more um, in your awareness or in your um, mental space, in your mind space, I guess. So for me, it's very physical. I can feel the heat. And when I feel that heat, I know that it's working. So the next ingredient we're going to add is calendula. Now calendula, or I believe marigold, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure this is marigold, is a, an, an herb that I associate with joy and with gratitude. So why would I add this to a trust blend? Because for me, a lot of times what's lacking when I'm feeling fearful, when I'm not leaning into trust, I'm not always recognizing all the beauty and goodness that is around me. So the calendula is to add that bit of like reminder to be grateful for the good stuff, to recognize the positive when it's around me, um, and to not miss those moments because I'm being fearful. So I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of the calendula as I'm focusing on gratitude. And as before, focusing on gratitude. Perfect. Now this is an herb that I got through a subscription box. Um, however, you should be able to find this at um, places where you can buy bulk herbs for, I believe, I believe for tea um, or at a local herbal um, supplier. I did recently do a video during our Eclectic Witchcraft live stream series. I did a series or an entire episode on where to find like good quality herbs and things like that for your practice. You may wanna check that out. So the next ingredient that we are going to add is Thistle. So I have here some blessed thistle that came in a witch's moon subscription box. Um, but thistle I bring in because of its ability to help with resilience. Thistle is a resilient plant. And so resilience for me when I'm creating a trust blend, the reason resilience is important is because a lot of times the reason we're struggling with trust, at least in my experience, is because we've had an experience or many experiences where that trust has been damaged by somebody. And resilience is a reminder that we can bounce back from those experiences and trust again in the future. So some thistle, concentrating on resilience. And I try to keep my focus to one word if I can, rather than overcomplicating it because it's easier for me to direct that intention into my blend. Perfect. Um, next, I want to add a little bit of yarrow. 
Now, yarrow is um, a pretty commonly available herb, and depending on where you live, it can be also relatively easy to harvest for yourself um, in the wild. Just make sure you are getting the correct thing. Also, I never make an herbal blend with the intention of drinking it in a tea or making any kind of an of a ingestible from it of any kind without doing incredibly incredibly careful research into very trustworthy sources to make sure that everything is safe to have in a tea or a tincture. Most of the time when I make herbal blends, I make them for magical use, not meant to be ingested, just so you know. Um, so it just, that's just a precaution to be aware of. If you plan to use um, an herbal blend for teas or for tinctures or for anything else, then you will definitely want to do your homework and make sure that everything that you are using is completely safe, has been harvested, and is correct, that the correct thing has been harvested. Just a little disclaimer. So for yarrow, courage is why I am pulling this in. So one of the one of the components or one of the associations that I have for yarrow is that it grants courage. And again, when dealing with trust, courage, having that, because um, trusting is scary, right? So moving past the fear and moving into courage is really, really super helpful. Like in general, I feel like this definitely helps to dispel fear, to grant courage. So that is why I'm adding yarrow. So I'm going to be concentrating on courage as I add this and charge it. So something else to point out, proportions. When you're building your herbal blend, whether it's for trust or any other kind of herbal blend, your proportions will have an effect on how this blend works for you, right? So if you felt like you needed a lot of courage, maybe more so than trust, maybe you have more yarrow than marjoram in your blend, right? So you can adjust. You can go, you know what? I really feel like I need extra courage. You can add more yarrow. And that's the benefit of working with a single keyword for every herb so that you can focus on one singular intention and you can adjust your recipe or your proportions that way. Now, I like to make my things fairly organically without measurements, but you could also build recipes using measurements. You can use proper measurements like tablespoons, teaspoons, um, ounces, grams, whatever you like. You could also do something where you do like one part this to two parts that or three parts this, etc. So that's another way you could work with it if you feel like taking that more um, repeatable approach. I like to kind of loosey-goosey organic with a lot of my spell work. So this is how I do it. So two more ingredients to add. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of lavender. I add lavender to a lot of my workings because I like the smell, honestly. Any working I'm doing that I want to invite or invoke an element of calm or peace or serenity to, I feel like lavender is great. Lavender for me is also great with um, promoting sort of spiritual connection, third eye connection or magic. So it's a good all arounder and it's really easy to get my hands on because it does grow in my local area. So I can almost always get more lavender really easily. So it's a great um, multi-purpose herb for me. So I am actually using this for calm because again, when I'm feeling like I need to trust more, I'm often feeling anxious in some way. And so having an herb to bring calm is a great booster for a trust blend for me personally. Your mileage may vary, but I'm gonna add a little bit of lavender while focusing on calm. Okay, so last ingredient, and this I think is a really potent one to include in workings like this, is black peppercorn. So pepper specifically is really, really wonderful for breaking negative patterns. So negative patterns of behavior, negative patterns of thought, um, just being hard on yourself, um, blasting your inner critic. Pepper is a potent little herb. So I am specifically using this for breaking negative patterns. So I haven't come up with a single keyword for that, but I'm going to be focusing on breaking negative pattern as I add peppercorn to my blend. The pattern I want to break, obviously, is that fear, that inability to trust that that barrier that's there. So that is what I'm focusing on as I add some peppercorn to my blend. Okay, 
So lastly, I like to concentrate on my overall goals for this. And this is where I let my, my, my mind get a little more chattery, less about single keyword focus and more about like repeating to myself in my mind what the goal of this blend is, what I'm trying to accomplish. And because I have herbs in here that are meant to dispel or break bad patterns, like dispel fear and break negative patterns like the pepper and the yarrow. And I also have herbs that are meant to bring in things like gratitude, trust, and calm. I'm not going to worry about which direction I am using my mortar and pestle in. Although a lot of people will say that for any kind of magic where you're drawing in, you want to move in a clockwise um, direction on anything where you're banishing, you want to move in like a uh, Wittershins a counterclockwise direction. That's just like more of a neo-pagan practice. If that doesn't resonate for you, you don't have to do that. But it's kind of stuck in my head, so I tend to. But when I have a blend like this that's doing both things, drawing in and pushing out at the same time, I just don't worry about it. I just go with what feels right. So I like to try to kind of crack my pepper and then blend everything together a bit when I'm doing this. And one last charge. And I like to take a sniff. Yeah, it smells really good. The pepper actually breaks up really, really well in this blend. Um, and there's something really satisfying about cracking the peppercorns with my, um, I don't know which part's the mortar and which part's the pestle. If anybody knows, drop it in the comments down below. <laughs> I literally can't remember. But anyways, I'm going to just add this into the top of my existing blend. And I'm going to give everything a little shake. So I'm going to consider this kind of like a recharge of my blend. Now again, depending on what it is you're working on, what you've uncovered through your self-awareness work, and what you think you could use a little magical assistance with, your herb selection may be different. Um, and you may not have this many herbs, but if you could start with one simple kitchen herb, that may be all you put in and the rest is intention. You can look through your cupboard, see what other herbs you have, look up their properties, and see what might make sense to add in. Um, but developing any kind of an herbal blend to support your personal growth or self-worth path work, I think is a really, really powerful way to integrate magic into personal development. And I love, love, love doing it. Um, this blend has just been really, really great. I've used it in oils. I have used it in my bath. I have used it in sachets. I've used it in spell work. I've used it in bath salts. I've used it as incense. It is my very, very favorite thing. And because it's so personalized to my own personal development work, it's a wonderful way to incorporate that work into my magical life and to incorporate my magical life into my personal development work. And it's just all beautifully blended and I love it so, so much. Um, I actually made two full jars of this when I made my blend for myself the first time and my other jar is like down to like half now. But anyway... That, my friends, is the Herbal Blend for Trust. I would love to hear if you guys plan to use this recipe or make one of your own. Let me know what you feel like sharing in the comments down below. I'm always eager to hear how this stuff is working out for you. I'd also love some feedback on how you're enjoying the Walking the Self-Worth Path series. If you feel like sharing that with me, that'd be great. I have a lot more content coming up as we continue to move through the different areas of the Self-Worth Path through this series. So I hope you'll hang out with me and watch this all unfold. Um, we're going to be diving into more stuff soon. Thank you so, so much. Please do click like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. Click the little bell to be notified of all my future videos and my live streams. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one tarot reading with me, you can always do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.